Listen, Ellie, there, there are going to be people out there who say, why should Clarence Thomas recuse himself from January 6th related cases because of his wife's behavior? How do you respond? Yeah, as I said in that article, the problem is not Jenny Thomas. She is free to go around and inspire rebellion and insurrection or whatever it is she, do, she does on her free time. The problem is that Clarence Thomas is supposed to be above this fray. He's supposed to be an impartial justice, and nobody should believe that he is impartial when it comes to deciding whether or not things like his messy wife's text messages should be revealed to the public. That is not something that a loving husband can impartially decide. I think that's pretty obvious. And the problem is that Thomas has been messy when it comes to this kind of corruption based on his wife for his entire career. All right, Thomas has recused himself in cases involving his former employer. He's recused himself in cases involving his son, but he has never, not once in 30 years, recused himself because of Jenny Thomas's activities, even though her activities have been all wrapped up in cases and controversies in Thomas's own courtroom. Right, o Obamacare is one case that comes to mind. Representative Zoe Lofgren spoke to my colleague Yasmin Vasugi and just a short time ago about whether Ginny Thomas should be subpoenaed. I want you to listen to what she said. The fact that she went down a conspiracy rabbit hole and just said some really bizarre things in her text doesn't make her necessarily an important figure in the January 6th uh, plot. Ali, in your opinion, should Thomas be called before the committee? Yes, of course. Like, how are we still messing around with this stuff? She has done things like sent Trump an enemies list, right? She's She apparently was integral in helping people kind of raise, let's say, just raise awareness of the plot to overthrow the government. And Donald Trump himself has said that he would not have Jenny Thomas in the room but for her connection to her powerful husband. Clarence Thomas was the only person only one of the nine justices to vote against revealing uh, Trump's documents involving January 6th. So there's a lot of questions that I would have for Jenny Thomas. And the idea that somehow we shouldn't ask her is exactly the kind of corruption that she's trading on. The only reason the January 6th committee is afraid of subpoenaing uh, Jenny Thomas is because of her powerful corrupt corruption, because of her powerful husband which is the whole basis of the corruption. And it's, it's, I think it's insulting to the American people to suggest that this person is not important enough to be called to testify. It's really wild that this is all playing out as we have confirmation hearings for Judge Ketanji Brown-Jackson. I want you to listen to how Vice President Harris spoke about it with my colleague, Joy Reid. Take a listen. I experienced great joy when I watched this brilliant phenomenal black woman jurist be so smart and just cut through the political gamesmanship that they were attempting to incite and she just was composed and as far as I'm concerned was taking a whole lot of people to school I want both your, both your thoughts on that and just sort of the, the optics of, of us having this conversation about Clarence Thomas and his wife and their behavior and then the way that you had Ketanji Brown Jackson being treated by Republicans in those hearings. Let's start with the hypocrisy, right? They asked Ketanji Brown Jackson directly if she would recuse herself from the upcoming affirmative action case um, against Harvard University because she was on the Harvard Board of, Board of Overseers. And she said yes which is entirely appropriate for her to say. Elena Kagan, former Solicitor General, recused herself all the time for cases that she had involved herself with. So why is there one standard of review for, for, for women on the Supreme Court that's different from the men on the Supreme Court? Like, how make that make sense? How can these Republicans, out of one side of their mouth, demand that Jackson recuse herself from this Harvard case when she's 
on the board, but won't demand that Thomas recuse himself when his wife's text messages are some of the documents that the January 6th committee is looking to reveal. The hypocrisy is obvious, I think, to most people. But again, I, I always try to bring this back to what can the Democrats do about this? Let's remember that the Supreme Court operates without ethics rules. Let's remember that the Democrats tried to pass H.R. 1, which had a lot of ethics for Congress, didn't have a lot of ethics for the Supreme Court, that we should maybe think about applying ethics rules for the Supreme Court. And we should maybe think about asking Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema why they are against ethics for the Supreme Court and for Congress, because that's the bottleneck right now. It's not... Uh, you can't expect Republicans to be any more than they are. They are hypocrites and they are liars. But at some point, Democrats have to answer for why they're not doing everything they can do to bring ethical guidelines to the court, because clearly they need some.